Hello everybody, it's Pastor Noah here with another week of virtual online junior church. I'm excited that you're joining me this week. And I'm excited also because we're starting a new series and and working in a different book of the Bible this week. And hint, hint, nudge, nudge, it's we're moving towards Christmas. All right, Christmas is right around the corner. And so the book of the Bible that we're going to look at in the very beginning of the book of this Bible, uh, this book of the Bible, it has the story, the account of Christmas. All right, the book of the Bible we're looking at is the book of Matthew. Okay, so if you're a big kid and you have a Bible and you're able to read, or even if you can use mom or dad's Bible, I want to challenge you right now while I'm sort of introducing the book of Matthew, get out that Bible and try to turn to the book of Matthew. Okay, the book of Matthew. Matthew is is a cool book. It's one of the books that tells us about the, the story, the account around how Jesus was born and what happened. There's only one other book in the Bible that does that. Okay, do you know what it is? I'll give you some options, okay? It's Matthew is the one of the ones that has it. There's only three options. It's either Mark, Luke, or John. Which one do you think it is? Does Mark have the story like Matthew does? Does Luke have the story like Matthew does? Or does John have the story like Matthew does? If you guessed Luke, you're right. Luke and Matthew are the two books of the Bible that tell us of the exact, uh, or the events of the story uh, surrounding Jesus' birth. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We have a couple different uh, versions of it, and they certainly don't say anything um, that doesn't make sense with the other one. The stories line up, and so that's really cool for us to be able to look at. But if you're trying to turn to the book of Matthew, uh, hopefully you know the answer to this question, right? Is Matthew either in the Old Testament or in the New Testament? If you guess the New Testament, you're right. Matthew is in the New Testament. Testament. And so I'm actually going to show you Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. So here's my Bible. Here's where we we finished the Old Testament. It comes to the New Testament. And then the very next page is the book of Matthew. And there's up here is the name Matthew. Okay. So the book of Matthew is is pretty cool. All right. So I have a little poster here. We used this poster a little while back uh, for one of the other books we looked at, but it just has some simple introductory information for us about the book of Matthew. All right. So Matthew tells us the name of the book. Remember, most of the time it tells us in the New Testament, at least, who wrote the book or who the book was written to. And so Matthew is the name of the person that wrote the book. Okay, Matthew was a disciple of Jesus, just like Peter was. We looked at Peter a little while back. Uh, and so Peter and Matthew were disciples of Jesus. They followed Jesus. We're going to talk about uh, Matthew in a little bit as well. But um, Matthew followed Jesus. And so one of the things that he does is he writes down some of the accounts of his life. And so he wrote it to other Christians. He wrote it to other Christians who were Jews just like Jesus was. And Jews understood that God had promised them to send a Savior. God promised that he was going to send a Messiah, somebody that was going to save us from our sins. And so Jews understood that. And so the book of Matthew really was written so that people would see, the Jewish believers would see that Jesus really was that Savior. Okay, our poster says it was written to reveal Jesus as the Messiah and the one that fulfilled the prophecies, meaning all the predictions that that God made that weren't really predictions because he knew they were going to happen. But the predictions that God made hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago about Jesus, all those came true in the life of Jesus. And so Matthew was writing this book to help the believers understand and people who maybe didn't know or were questioning Jesus. um, So that way they could see that Jesus really was the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Now, if you're there in Matthew, you can kind of see Matthew is an interesting book in that it starts with something that very few books have in them, let alone start with. Okay, so if you're open there to the book of Matthew, I want you to look at the very beginning of the book of Matthew, and it's got something that looks sort of funny. It looks like just this big list of names, right? And it's talking about who's the father and who's the son, and sometimes it's talking about mothers and stuff, but it's a really long list. I mean, it goes from all the way from chapter 1 of Matthew for verse 2 all the way 
in to verse 16. So there are 16 verses, 15 verses of a list of just names. Doesn't that seem like a waste? Why would you want to read that? Well, it goes right back to what we're talking about, uh, about Matthew helping us to see that Jesus really is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. What that is called in the very beginning of the book of Matthew is called a genealogy. Okay, genealogy is just a really long word for, it's like a family tree. It's showing us who Jesus was related to. Okay, one of the things that the Bible promised about Jesus, about the Savior, when that Savior came, they would be in the line, in the family of David and of Abraham. And so telling us and showing us in this genealogy that Jesus is related to David and to Abraham is really important for people that were Jewish because they could say, oh, he's, he's fulfilling that part of what God said he would. All right. And so uh, Jesus has this genealogy. We also see the genealogy in Luke. But instead of it being on his dad's side, which is what Matthew has, it's on his mom's side. So we can see that Jesus is definitely in the right line in order to be the Savior. So I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to attempt to do an actual family tree. If you want to do that, I would encourage you to do that this week. Um, you can look it up uh, with an adult helping you. Check out some, some things online that can help you to do that. But I'm not going to attempt to do it. But basically the idea of a family tree is it looks like a tree. So here we have, this is what we're going to use for Jesus in a minute. But you can see the stump of the tree, the beginning of the tree. And then as you go up, every branch that comes off of this tree has a family on it. And so it shows you how all the families are connected and related. All right. I'm going to do the super easy version of this, which you could certainly do. You could even stop the video after I do it and take some time to do it. But the super easy version of this is just to sort of start with yourself and go up. Pick, pick a side of your family and say, we're going to go this way. So for me, my name is Noah, right? And if we want to go back even farther, we could go back to, let's say, Porter, all right? We'll stick with the guys for my family tree, all right? You could, if Olivia was doing it, Olivia could do um, Mrs. Kellerman instead of me if she wanted to, okay? But we'll start with Porter, okay? So you got Porter way down there, all right? And then there's me, and then there's my dad. And then my dad's dad would have been my grandfather, right? I'm just going to put GF for grandfather, okay? And then if you keep going, you can keep going really, really, really far back. You probably don't know after a certain point. Like for me, I, I don't ever remember meeting my grandfather. Uh, I did meet him, but I was young when he passed away. So for me, I don't really know anybody up here. Okay, I don't even know that I could tell you what their names are up here, <laughs> all right? Because they're part of my family, and I'm here because they had kids, sure, but I don't know who those, those kids are or who those people are. So if you're doing a family tree, uh, you could even just do a list over here of their brothers and sisters. So my dad had, he, was, he had seven brothers and sisters. He was one of eight children. So I have seven aunts and seven, well, I have, yeah, I have seven aunts and seven uncles on my dad's side of the family. And each of them that had children, their children are cousins to me. So in a family tree in the real deal, it has all that stuff listed out. Okay, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to try to do that here. But this is sort of the easy, simple version of it. Okay, so we're going to do this with Jesus real quick, sort of just to get us going. Uh, and this is really going to be the, the main idea of what we're talking about today in our lesson. So actually, before I use, I have slips of paper, and we will put them on there. But I'm just going to write the names on and put them in a random order. And then I'm going to let you see if you can figure out where they go as far as Jesus was concerned. So you got Mary and Joseph. We've got Jacob. We've got um, Abraham. Okay, I already mentioned the names Abraham and, and David, right? So you know they're all 
or they're both related to Jesus. And so we'll put Jesus at the very bottom. So this is the, the one that's right. Okay. So you're starting there. So if you want, you can stop the video and sort of talk about this with mom or dad or brother or sister. So Jesus is who we're looking at. So who is older than Jesus? All of these people are older than Jesus. All right. But who, can you put them in the right order? Okay. So don't put um, one of them. So you couldn't put Mary and Joseph under the name Jesus because Mary and Joseph, okay, I'm going to give you one of the answers here. Mary and Joseph are the name that's right above Jesus because they're his parents. Okay, so let's see if you can go in the right order. So if you want to stop the video and try that, go ahead. If you don't, keep watching. So I'm going to put Jesus here. We know that Jesus was first for our purposes this morning or evening or whenever you're watching. All right, I also told you that Mary and Joseph were next. There it is. All right. Now, who's next? You've got Abraham, Jacob, or David. If you put David next, you would be right. David was a king of Israel, and so uh, David was certainly not Mary or Joseph's dad. Okay, we're talking, there's a lot of people between, and, and again, if you look in the beginning of the book of Matthew, you see that list. Okay, you can see how many people there are between David and Joseph. And, and it's not even in the Bible, they have to sort of condense it down even more because the list would be even longer. All right, uh, but we can see that certainly in Scripture. So there's David. All right, next you got either Jacob or Abraham. So if you think that Abraham is next, eh, you're wrong, it's Jacob. All right, Jacob is next. And then after Jacob, Jacob also gets the name Israel. Okay, so we talk about the nation of Israel. That's really this, the family tree here is, is this is the nation of Israel. Abraham, God made a promise to Abraham that he was going to bless the world through him. Okay, and that meant he was going to bring Jesus through his line. That's one of the things that it meant. Okay, and so Abraham, eventually you come to Jacob, then you come to David, and, and then Sometime later, you come to Mary, and now you come to Jesus. And so Matthew's really starting the book out showing us that Jesus really is the Son of God. He really is the one that God promised to send. And one of the ways that we know that, just right up front, by starting this book this way, he says we can see it because he's related to the people that God promised he would be. He's in that line. And if you think about this, this is amazing because this, just this tree right here spans, I mean, from Jesus to Abraham uh, is at least, depending on how you date the Bible and all that kind of stuff, it's a couple thousand years. That's a long time between here and here. And God made this promise and he kept it over a long time. What does that mean for us? God, God keeps his promises. The promises that God makes that he loves you and that he cares for you and that he's, if you believe in him, you're going to be in heaven one day. Those are promises that we can trust because if there's a God that can keep a promise over such a long period of time, how much more is he going to come through on a promise that his own son died for? Right? And that's what we celebrate and remember. We don't celebrate the death piece, but we remember it on Good Friday. And then we celebrate the resurrection on Easter. And so that's really what makes Christmas awesome. Because Jesus, we know that he came, but he came for Easter. And so we celebrate it all the same. And so that's really the main uh, content of what we're talking about today here. I'll show you your picture. So if you're online there, you can check out the, the coloring page version of this. Uh, but a little bit about Matthew, because we're going to be in the book of Matthew for the next couple weeks here. Uh, Matthew was a tax collector. Okay, and tax collectors weren't people that were really liked well back then. And so um, Matthew worked for uh, the Roman government, and the Roman government um, gave Matthew, or allowed Matthew to have authority and power, and sometimes tax collectors um, abused that, and they used that power the wrong way in, in, in 
normally for them it meant taking money from people that they shouldn't have been taking money from or they shouldn't have been taking as much money as they were. So Matthew wasn't what we would consider a good guy when he comes in contact with Jesus for the first time. But Jesus still says, come and follow me, Matthew. Okay? He doesn't say, I'm going to make you a fisher of men because he's not a fisherman. But he tells him that he can come with him. And his job completely changes at that point. After that point, he follows him. For three years, Matthew's walking with Jesus and listening to Jesus as Jesus is teaching people and working with people. Okay? And Matthew knew as Jesus was teaching and talking, he's learning this, uh, this idea, if he didn't know it already, these concepts of the Jewish faith about the promise that was made and about how or, or where um, the Savior would come from. Excuse me, my phone apparently is still on. I will... It's not working. There we go. All right. So, um, so that's Matthew, all right? And so Matthew writes this book to tell people and to show people that he really is the Messiah. He really is the Son of God. And so there's a couple other names that you recognize. One fun activity for you guys this week, if you want to, is to open up to Matthew 1 with your mom or with your dad. Uh, or if you can read, you can certainly do it if you're there already. And I want you just to scan through that list of names. How many of those names do you know? How many of those names do you recognize? Some of them you might recognize. Some of the names that I would guess you'll recognize are Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Okay, so we have Abraham and Jacob up here, right? Um, Obed, Jesse, David, Solomon, Josiah, and then I would guess that you recognize the name Joseph because Joseph was Jesus' father, right? Well, earthly father at least. Okay, so... Uh, hopefully you learned a little something to this, this week, today, uh, to be challenged by throughout the week. Uh, I would encourage you to check out and try to maybe do your own family tree like we did for Jesus. If you want to get a little bit more in-depth with it, go for it and have fun with it, all right? Thanks for listening. Uh, I'm going to pray, and then we'll be done for this week. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for today. We thank you for just the opportunity that we have to look at your word. And we thank you that not only does it tell us about the awesome and amazing things that Jesus has done for us, but we thank you that it tells us and shows us the awesome and amazing God that you are, that you can work through human history over thousands of years to bring about a Savior to the world. That in and of itself is just amazing. We thank you so much that it didn't stop there, that you, you promised a Savior and the Savior showed up in the line and in the exact way that you said that he would, but that he also then went and died on the cross for us and rose from the dead. I thank you for the kids that are listening. I pray that they'd have a great, safe week. And uh, we thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for listening and have a good week.